Good morning and welcome to the Wake Dot Show. I am Fisher along with uh, Johnny Torres. And the first thing that we're going to do this morning is get an earworm out of our uh, out of our head. Well, it's, a, in my, it's an earworm that's in my head. And it's been in my head for uh, quite some time. <clears throat> you, here we go. Hey, don't count yourself out yet. I can't sing. You're supposed to sing along. <laughs> Feel left, left out. out. Or look down. down. What? Just try the best. best. Try everything you can. Don't worry what they tell themselves when you're away. It just takes some time, little girl. You're in the middle of the ride. Everything, everything will be just fine. Everything, everything will be all right, all right. Hey, you know you're all the same. You know you're doing better on your own. So don't buy in. I love the lead, and that was great. Right now, <laughs> it just, just be yourself. It doesn't matter if it's good enough. And these poor bastards but someone else are only hearing me sing and no music. It just oh, takes no. some time, <laughs> little girl. You're in that middle. I didn't know it was ride. I thought it was line. Everything, everything will be just fine. Everything, everything will be all right, all right. All right, so we got that out of our system. <laughs> And for those of you that are watching on my personal page, I'm so sorry. Yeah, because uh, they're not hearing any of the music. Oh, right? all they're hearing is ju- <laughs> I'm just screaming directly into. And I, yeah, I went from a 10 people down to three like that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> all right, well, I'm going to turn that off. It's a little much uh, for 730 in the morning. <laughs> Elliot goes, I've had this nightmare before. <laughs> all right, <laughs> so I'm going to well, finish up this. Please go over to the awake.show and like the awake.show. Thank you so much. We'll get that out of the way and get to stuff you should know. Sorry, we started a little bit late this morning. Um, we have a, a musical guest that is uh, in, and they are uh, Johnny had to set them up downstairs. They got here a little bit early, so we just wanted to uh, take care of that um, first. So, boom! Let me shrink this bad boy, and there we go. All right. So, welcome to the Wake Dot Show. How you doing this morning, Mister uh, Torres? Uh, considering that oh. uh, it was a late night, uh, I'm doing pretty good. Oh, do- uh, feeling pretty good. Uh, even. Uh, you know, looking forward to talking about what went down in Alabama last night. But even more so, I'm more excited to talk about or not talk about the Christmas present that we're putting together for our audience, for the Wake Dot Show viewers, our little Christmas special that went down last night. So we're not so, telling them about it? So, no, I don't, okay. I, I don't want to tell them about it. I just want to leave that out there. We got a present for you. All right. We got you a Christmas present is what we're saying. Uh, can we can we tell them like w- when they're getting this present? So it'll happen the Friday before Christmas. Okay, so we're so. going to wait until the very last minute. So that's the 22nd, them- right? Yeah, because we're definitely not doing a Christmas uh, day show. Right. So, <laughs> uh, so on the uh, the 22nd, then, we do have something special that we Yes. Uh, all right. Very so, special. So did that not go live last night? Um. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, okay no. We'll just leave it there. We'll leave it there. Yeah. We'll leave it there. All right. So we're very excited about that. Also, I have a musical guest coming up this morning. And we also have... Uh, uh, it's Wednesdays, and on Wednesdays we check in with Eric Stratman of TNL Nutritional or Nutrition Coaching. And uh, so, one of the things that I'm supposed to be doing uh, over the past week, since we've had him on, really two weeks, is I downloaded this app, My Fitness Pal. I'm supposed to load in all the stuff I eat. You know, every time, you know, every glass of water, just load it in, load it in, load it in. It's a very difficult thing for me to do. So um, he texted me the other day. Because he wants me to do well. He wants me to succeed at this. He wants me to drop the weight that I want to drop and so on. He goes, hey, man, I really want you to be successful, not just for the show, but for you personally and your long-term health. I really need you to log everything you're eating and drinking so we can make this work. Deal? And I appreciate this. You know, as a, as a trainer, it's, you know, he, he, he works with some clients that, man, he tells them what to do. Boy, they're on it. Bam, 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 bam. Other clients like me, it is, it's very difficult. Um, but he's done a very good job of checking in with me every couple of days to try to, you know, get me moving forward. He's not being a jerk about it. He's not uh, hounding me. And, you know, stuff like this. He goes, man, I want you to be successful. So he catches me at a time uh, where I'm, tr- I'm getting ready to uh, go live, do a Facebook live interview with uh, an artist that's in downtown St. Pete uh, doing a mural. And I was just in that, you know, I was 
already not stressed, but just kind of like ah. And when he sent me that, it 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 made me just this anxiety came over me because for whatever reason, uh, not only is it not easy for me to do simple tasks like load in, you know, what I eat, uh, it's almost impossible. So I text him back. I'm trying. I have some serious anxiety issues when I go to do stuff like this. Very serious. It shuts me the f- down. I spiral to the point of suicidal thoughts. And this, I'm not being melodramatic. I wasn't being melodramatic when I, when I said on this. It's, it's true. Um, and I hate it. I'm calling a psychologist so I can work on that on my end. And I will do my best when I get home to log the stuff I remember from yesterday and today. I'm really, really sorry. Thank you for your help. Uh, and so then he uh, messages him. He said, no worries, brother. I understand, you know, a little bit of a time. Uh, that's why, you know, I don't want to overwhelm you with too many details, just logging for now. It seems like such a simple task. And if you're a normal human being, um, per, uh, perplexing, but for whatever reason, though, those kinds of things in my life, uh, I don't even know what, what you mean by those kinds of things, fish. I don't even know what I mean by those kinds of things. Like, I don't know. Uh, going just simple, uh, going to the mailbox, going, you know, we moved, we just moved recently, just going to change my address, you know, going to my bank and changing my address, going to here, change all those things. All of a sudden, when I go to think about those and go to execute them, there's this, cr- ang- I, I guess this, it's anxiety. I guess is what it is. There's the only way to just, dis- I, I've never been able to describe it. And the reason that I've never, or, or haven't really dealt with it proper, properly is because it's, it's a constant loops loop that feeds itself. And, and what I mean by that is I go, all right, well, I need to get help with this. Is there obviously something wrong? Well, then my brain goes, no, it's you, you lazy piece of shit, blah, blah, blah. blah. And I start fucking, excuse my language. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to. Sorry about that. No, no, no. I know that we can, uh, you know, there's no FCC rules here, but we do have a rule here at the, at, at, uh, the wake dot show. Uh, Johnny plays by radio rules. I play by radio rules plus shit. And then the guests, we don't censor at all. We let guests, you know, do what they do. Yeah. So that's that's what we do. Radio, right, Johnny? Your your radio, your your radio I would rules. Say so. Your radio rules straight, not radio rules plus shit, right? Yeah. No, it's it's hard for me to break out of that. I understand, but something that's I've always wanted to do on the radio for my entire career is say shit. Why? Why is it? Because you uh, are you you are you're not intelligent enough to uh, find a better word. Probably. That's probably the answer. <laughs> but I just feel like shit is something that is just so commonplace. Maybe it's because it's the only cuss word I ever heard my mom or my grandmother say, which I heard it less than a handful of times. Right. But I feel like if my grandmother could say it, you know, my good Catholic grandmother could say shit, then everybody should be able to say shit. See, for me, for the most part, uh, I, I just I don't cuss like on a regular basis. But when I do, even in casual conversation, it kind of opens the floodgates. And then at that point, you know, it's like for the rest of the day, I'm just like cussing up a storm. You know, it's just it's, it's really like breaking weird. the seal on your bladder. Yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> Once just... I drop one F-bomb, man, I can't stop. <laughs> I, I'm right. going all day. No self-control <laughs> whatsoever. Man, I, I sling out the N-word at 6 a.m. And I'm, sl- I'm throwing it out there 10 more times before the day's <laughs> nah, end. I don't know about that. So uh, um, back to my psychological issues. I, I really don't have any answers. And the reason that it spirals and I get uh, so so dark uh, so quickly is because I go, if, if in my head, I, it's something to the effect of if I can't even pay a bill or uh, go to the, not even pay a bill, go to the mailbox. See, and it's not even about, oh, yeah, nobody likes to go to their uh, mailbox. Uh, you don't understand. <laughs> You don't understand on that spectrum of people not going to the mailbox where normal people are. And nobody likes to go to their mailbox because there's going to be stuff in there that you don't want to see. Well, and for you, it's not just procrastination. It's not. And which it could be misconstrued as right. It could be perceived as procrastination. It is anxiety about performing specific tasks. Um, And to to get and I know that I've shared I've shared this with you before the mailbox thing where I leaned away. Right. Yeah. I've said it on the show. Okay. Because I know that I've uh, described that before on the radio. And uh, just real quickly, uh, there's a point where I'm driving by my mailbox in a place that I lived two places ago. And um, it got so bad that as I drove by the mailbox, mailbox over here, as I drove by, I found myself like leaning like this. What the what the F is that? I mean, my, my, yeah, my body is reacting as if yeah. I'm driving by a fire, you know? Mm-hmm. And it, it makes no sense whatsoever. Yeah. So the so the all, all these things in my life, like 
there, there are certain things I can do well. All right. So it's not like I'm completely useless. This is one of those things. Not everybody can, you know, do whatever the hell this is. Yeah. And I've made a decent living at it. Uh, but these other things just shut me down. Could it be kind of like you hear so many times that you know, celebrities kind of develop these odd habits and routines? And, you know, like, you know, we, we hear about you know, like your Howie Mandels and that sort of thing. Uh, where, you know, they're very kind of like, don't touch me, don't shake my hand, don't, you know, that sort of thing. Do you think it's it stems from basically putting yourself in such an uncomfortable position as going on the radio, being behind a microphone, being out in the public, which for somebody who has anxiety would be nearly impossible to do, and you make up for it by having these other anxiety issues uh, when it comes to daily kind of routine things? I don't know. This stuff definitely goes back to my childhood, um, you know, because in the same category, according to the, uh, the mental health experts that I have talked to about this, um, and I tell them how I, I could not write a paper until the night before it was due, you know, in junior high school and high school and college. And, um, and they say, well, that's, that's a sign of perfectionism. And, and so let me, let me just read to you because prof, uh, perfectionism in layman's terms means something very different than yeah. it does in clinical terms. Right. Because you start talking about perfectionism and perfectionists. Well, I'm a, perfe I'm a perfectionist. No, no, no. <laughs> you, 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 again, you don't understand uh, the, where this falls in the spectrum. Uh, the procrastination hangover, this is just something I just Googled real quickly. Procrastination is often a symptom of perfectionism because perfectionists fear being a unable to complete a task perfectly. They put it off as long as possible. This stems from a fear that not meeting the goal means that there is something bad wrong or unworthy inside of them so that does make sense to me uh -huh. but when it so when it comes to the the getting in shape and staying in shape so the, the the conversations that I've had over the years, and I want to talk to Eric about this you know he's a personal trainer will be coming out at 845 well uh, there's a lot of psychological elements to what he does yeah very much well, I want to talk to him about that like how much is he in do, it, is, is that his forte? Like, you know, can he get into somebody's head? Can he help somebody? You know, he's not a psychologist. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm not talking about actual professional mental health. Uh, but, you know, how much he does focus on those kinds of things. Or norm, do nor, normally when people go to somebody like him, or they're not like me, maybe. You know, there's somebody who for, can <laughs> execute uh, very simple things. But when it goes to the comes to the gym, and we'll get to the stuff you should know here in a second. I apologize for starting the show off like this today. But um, when it comes to going to the gym, it's like the second that I I think about it and take one step forward to go to the gym or to get again, it, it's a I can feel it in my body. It is crushing it. It almost feels like there's uh, a vice on the left side of my body. That will just go like this really quick and double me down. Like I'll, I'll double over and it is obviously crazy. Um, but okay. So fish that's okay. So you're, you're, you're talking to us, you know, we tuned in this morning to get some stuff you should know and to hear you and Johnny joke around about uh, what's going on in the world today. And here you are dumping on, are you going to give us uh, you know, 80 bucks an hour to listen to your psychological BS? Because uh, you know, this has got to be a two way street, man. If we're going to listen to your crap, you're going to take my crap too. That's part of the, 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 the cycle that won't stop for me because you go, all right, we'll just call somebody, call a GD psychologist for F's sake and quit, you know, going through this. The same thing happens. I go, that is a very hard thing for me to do is to pick up the phone and call for help, I guess. I don't know, or period. And so then that I sit there and I'll beat up myself going, you piece of shit. You're an effing piece of shit. How can you not pick up the GD phone just to make a simple effing phone call? You don't even deserve to live. Why are you, how did you even make it this far? And, and that stuff that I'm saying right now is on, this, on the scale of beating myself up is like a three because that will get very ugly. There is an F bomb after every single word in my head. Johnny, over the summer, before my wife and I moved into this uh, uh, new house, mm -hmm. she and I were still out at St. Pete Beach. We were down on Paso Grill, and we were getting us some food. I go up to the bar. I can't remember the name of the restaurant now, but uh, we were sitting out in an area where they didn't have a server. So I went and put an order, and I screwed it up. I screwed up the order. 
My wife asked for something, some chicken sandwich, and I accidentally got her a different kind of a chicken sandwich. And so she's like, oh, you know, whatever. And she gets when, when she gets the food and I'm like, I'm sorry, because this isn't the first time that my memory, you know, that I've effed up something like that. You know, like uh, I'll go to the store sure. and she, I'm yeah, supposed to happens. get something and I get something else. Right. There's, a, no, there's, there's another couple right here that we were chatting it up with. We didn't know. You know, we just met. We were just chatting it up with. I'm sitting there. The food comes. It's wrong. She says something. And what starts happening in my head is. Is undescribable it's i guilt I, it's guilt but to the nth degree i turn away because she's sitting here they're sitting here i turn this way towards the water and mumble because i can't stop myself i mumble yeah. into my shirt you fucking piece of shit what is that yeah so you go fish why haven't you called somebody why aren't you talking to somebody right now instead of wasting our time here on the internet i did here, here's, I called somebody three times. Um, it's not easy for me to make that phone call to try to get help because, uh, for whatever reason. And somebody recommended to me a psychologist in St. Pete who specializes in, uh, I don't know, whatever, whatever. I go, perfect. So I call this person. And it's not, to, to, I have to build up. It's, I have to build up to make this phone call. Sure. And nobody answers. I leave a message. Hi, I'm Chris Fisher looking for what, you know, whatever deal with mental health issues that can you please call me back? Do you accept Blue Cross Blue Shield? <laughs> Didn't get a phone call back. Well, it's going to take forever for me to call that call again because it, I have to get so worked up to make that phone call. But I did it again because my brain goes to a place. I'm like, I got to I got to call. I got to talk to somebody. So I call that same person back, that same psychologist. Left a message. Never got a phone call back. Weeks go by again. Weeks, weeks go by. Because I, so why didn't you just call somebody else? Right. I don't know. I don't know. It's because it is almost impossible. And the reason that I am talking about this kind of stuff this morning is because of what keeps popping up in the news too often. And whether it's uh, Chester Bennington, Chris Cornell, Robin Williams, and after some after after we lose them, we all sit here and go, "Whoa, well, I didn't see that coming. What what happened?" And and so in this time where we're trying to have a conversation about mental health, there's only one way I know how to do stuff like that, and it's just to be honest about my own stuff. Because it is so much easier to sit on the radio or to sit on television and start pointing out at other people and go, I know what's wrong with that guy. I know what's wrong with the president. He's got narcissistic personality disorder. Yeah, well, it's not as easy to point your finger back at you and go, you know, I know what's wrong with this guy. Or I don't know what's wrong with this guy. I just know something's a little bit off. Right. And uh, so I called a third time. And left a message, and she didn't call me back. And then that was it. I, I haven't been able to get up the. And you would think that somebody in that role would know better than to not what? return a phone call. And I'm thinking the same thing as 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 I've got this nauseous feeling inside, and then and and then the and then your your brain starts to play on you and go, maybe this is God, this is the universe. They're trying to kill you. They're trying to kill you, <laughs> you know, yeah. and, and the, the most horrible things go through your head. So, so Eric texted me on Monday from TNL nutrition and said, Hey man, I just want you to load in, you know what you're eating. I, it, and I told him I would try. That was Monday. I still haven't done it, John. I just, I still haven't done it. Well, we had, you know, a similar issue here uh, at Bake More Pies. You know, we we're obviously trying to find different ways for you to generate revenue for yourself. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And 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 it was a writing thing. And obviously writing is also a lot of pressure. Right. There's a lot of pressure that comes into any kind of writing, especially deadline writing. Yeah. You know, creative you, writing yep. and deadline writing, which is the, what the, what was given to you, you know, as an opportunity. And and I get it. Right. Because I I I've been told that I'm a good writer. Right. But. To me, once I get going, I'm good. Like it snowballs, right? But it's getting off the ground. You know that. You know it's like again the procrastination aspect of it, and then you know the questioning of whether or not it's going to be any good. Um, 
and and then you mentioned you know the the these same issues and you know and and obviously i mean it, it it's hard for me to sit here across from you and hear you kind of put all of this out there because i can hear the pain that you're in and for again someone not to be able to do anything about it you know as a friend who can't do anything about it other than sit here and listen to you i mean that's that's all that's really difficult because you know, your hands are tied, right? Like there's nothing I can do or say right now that's no. going to change that. Uh, and, and it's, and it's, and as someone who's lost friends this year, not due to those kind of issues, it's, it's hard to hear those kind of things. Good morning, Cords. Good morning. Welcome in. Um, let's, let's read a little bit about um, it. Cause the, the story that I, I clicked on, it says breaking the perfectionism, uh, procrastination, infinite loop. Thank you, Cords. Cheers. You know what? Coffee always makes you feel better in the morning, that's for sure. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Mm, what is this? Cafe con leche. Oh, cafe con leche. I thought you could only drink like that much of cafe con leche. Oh, that's, um, well, that's a Cuban coffee or um, what they call, uh, um, yeah, I mean, it, it's pretty much equal to like an espresso shot. Um, I'm forgetting what the hell they call it now, which is horrible. They're going to take my, my Hispanic card away. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, so break, and then we'll get to what uh, stuff you should know. All right, I'm already running uh, very late here. Uh, you get out of a meeting with your client full of ideas and energy about you, uh, what you're going to do next. You commit to a deadline for ideas, a proposal, designs, some kind of deliverable, um, some kind of deliverable to move the project forward. In your mind, at that moment, it's all crystal clear. You can't wait to work on it. This is this is already. I haven't read this yet, uh, but this is already striking a chord with me. This is me. You ask you ask him around here how many times since we started the show. And remember, this you know, the, the people that I'm working with here, Johnny, Cords, and everybody, I've only met uh, two months ago. Or I met uh, Johnny actually over the summer at a charity event, and then we got back together a couple months later, or a month later or so. Uh, but how many conversations we've had, we're like, oh, let's do this, do this. I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll get on that. Blah, blah. And walking away from that, I'm like, I'm on it. But, okay, so let me set up the, because you, you walked away for a second, Johnny. I'm yeah. going to read this paragraph again to you. Because it does help. You get out of the meeting with your client full of ideas and energy about what you're going to do next. You commit to a deadline for ideas, a proposal, design, some kind of deliverable to move the project forward. In your mind, at that moment, it's all crystal clear and you can't wait for it to work. But as the date looms closer, something changes. You want it to be amazing, fantastic, flawless. Even though your vision is clear and your idea is solid, you keep delaying the start of the process. The excitement that you initially felt begins to feel like dread. I have to do more research, gather more information, find more sources of inspiration before I start so I can, it can be really good. I'll get started tomorrow when I've got the time. Finally, it's the day before the due date. You're kicking yourself for putting it off and your sense of self flags along with your motivation to act. And then it's the due date. You're now not only beating yourself up for potentially messing up a big opportunity, but also panicking and stressing to pull it all together by the end of the day. I'd like to introduce you to the twins that just wreaked havoc upon your nerves and your work. Perfectionism and pro procrastination. And it goes on from there. All right, I'm not going to bore it because I know this is my stuff. I'll come back and read that later on in the show. Well, we're getting a lot of people tuning in, and so I appreciate everybody who is watching. Uh, you know, and 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 it's 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 tough because also from a show perspective, right? Like I'm like, you know, is this? Ooh, hi. <laughs> That's hot. Sorry, go ahead. <laughs> oh, Holy shit. <laughs> here, I'm going to put this back here and take the lid off. So, well, the thing is, I when I when I get my coffee, when I go to Starbucks, yeah. I ask for children's temperature. That just burnt the shit out of my tongue. Oh, my God. I go, uh, so here's here's my order. Here's my order every time. It is a uh, uh, skinny, van uh, skinny vanilla. Wait, oh, I don't even remember now. It's been a while. I can't afford Starbucks anymore. Uh, but uh, grande skinny vanilla children's tip uh, venti ah, whatever back to your story i'm sorry no anyways what i was just saying is that um well two things i mean based on the paragraph you just read uh the in a normal situation for instance like for me yes it's about hitting that that light bulb moment right when when you're like oh yeah i got it and then you go to work on it and then i'll just work on it until it's done but when, if that moment doesn't come you just sit there like this right uh, but the problem, but the, what, what, what seems to happen to you is, is that even when that moment comes, 
then it's the anxiety of not getting it done on time or not being able to execute it the way you want. And um, I, I'm going to do the best I can. Cords uh, came in and, and made an offer to me yesterday to help me. Yeah. Um, it wasn't through mental health, through something else. Um, he, he, he was, do, have you gone through this Carnegie course that he's talking about? Oh, yeah. that he's been, you've oh, been yeah. through it too? Oh yeah. It's, it's phenomenal. Did you do the three day or the eight week? Um, the eight week. Okay. Yeah. And so it's a, it's a business uh, development, professional development course. But he says um, he feels like it is something that'll help with my issues. Yeah. Because while those kind of, th these type of courses seem to have the most impact on people who are uh introverts who have trouble speaking in public and that sort of thing right, right. so guys like you and i like just kill it in a room like that right like that's oh yeah not, that's you know, yeah um where it will impact you is focus it will allow you to focus on the the your goals and to focus on the tasks that you set for yourself it will also uh, teach you to hold yourself accountable uh and it's also going to uh uh really uh, allow you to kind of overcome again some of the obstacles that you're currently facing I mean I think your your challenges are obviously deeper right like you definitely need to be seeing somebody and I don't yeah. mean that no, in a joking way I, I mean know, I know. Um, you know and it's and it's scary look as uh, you and I met through a suicide prevention event yep and for me to like to me I I'm seeing all the red flags and that's very scary to me uh so I I that I don't know that that'll ever be an option for me, but I can't guarantee it. Sure, no, yeah, and I'm sure that the people who who have either tried or successfully taken their lives probably would say the same thing. Right, uh, it's not going to happen. Oh, I can handle this. I can handle this. I can handle. You this. don't know what that one trigger is going to be. You don't know what that one moment is going to be that's going to put you over the edge. So that's one of the reasons why I feel like I need to talk about it publicly like this. Uh, for two reasons. One, it is it's cathartic for me. You know, the the mass media forum has been my home for you know twenty five years, and even going back before that, you know, I started DJing weddings and proms and uh, you know all that kind of stuff when I was fifteen, sixteen years old. So to get up and talk to the masses, to connect with the masses, is is easier for me sometimes than it is to sit one on one with somebody. Um, so. And I guess also part of, uh, you know, my, for lack of a better term, shtick, you know, throughout my career has been a certain amount of honesty about my failings. I've always, you know, taken those moments like my car getting repossessed, not because I didn't have the money, just because I didn't pay the bill. And, you know, in, in these other moments that people would normally look at and, sh well, no, they do. And it gives them an opportunity to judge me in their own minds uh, as they're listening to the radio to shame, to call into the show to make me feel like shit, to shame me during moments of, of, uh, of weakness and failings in my life. But at the same time, I've had many conversations over the years with people who have thanked me for those moments. Um, uh, a guy, a listener who became a friend, Tony, uh, when he first first called me as a listener on the request line a few years ago to win a prize or something I don't remember um, he thanked me he thanked me for saving his marriage and I didn't even know the guy and he said it was because I would talk about I would joke on the air I wouldn't just talk about because you can't just talk about the stuff on the radio it's too it brings the room down too much I think anyway so you joke about this stuff on the radio and I would joke about taking my brain to see the brain, my brain's IT guy, you know, going to therapy. So in his head, he's like, well, man, if Fisher is going to see somebody and this is a guy that's, a, you know, in the media and it's got a, go a show and blah, 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 blah. Got it all going on. Got a, it seems to have it all going on, but he's going to see a therapist every week. Yeah. Well, then maybe I should do something, too. Well, I mean, hell, look at Heath Ledger. I mean, you're talking about a young guy at the pinnacle of his career, seemingly has everything that a man would want. He has a successful career. He's got a family. He's got kids. Uh, and he's he's literally at the pinnacle of his career. Joker, his role as the Joker in The Dark Knight, um, I, I think it's The Dark Knight, um, is easily his best performance of his career. 
And in that moment, he, he is the unhappy. You're right. He's still trying to be happy every day. He was fighting demons. Right. Absolutely. He's, he's trying to get up in the morning and he's trying to go to sleep at night. He's having to do things to get up in the morning and to go to sleep at night. So I apologize. Some people were hearing piano music in the background, and uh, that's uh, our guest, James, who's warming up downstairs. Oh, um, it's bleeding and through? So, yeah, it was coming through, um, but I think I that's got fine. it handled down. A, light, a nice little so. mu- musical accompaniment is not uh, <laughs> no. uh-huh. so, uh So thank you so much for listening to uh, that this morning, and um, we'll get to stuff you should know right now. We'll talk a little bit more about it coming up at 845 when we get uh, Eric Stratman on the phone when we talk uh, to TNL Nutrition Coaching. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll touch on it again uh, there. Uh, but here you are, stuff you should know. A stunning victory aided by scandal. Democrat Doug Jones won Alabama's special Senate election on Tuesday, beating back history, an embattled Republican opponent and President Donald Trump, who urgently endorsed, I like how they put this, the uh, uh, com put this, the GOP rebel <laughs> Roy Moore, despite a litany of sexual misconduct allegations. Three Manatee County men accused of dragging a shark behind their boat have been charged with animal cruelty. After a four-month investigation, Governor Rick Scott even released a statement about this, um, saying that, quote, I was outraged by the sickening video of a shark being horribly abused earlier this year. Florida has no tolerance for this mistreatment, and I'm proud of the hard work of the FWC law enforcement during this investigation to hold these individuals accountable for their horrific actions. A semi truck was split in half. A semi. Uh, did you see this this morning? This was breaking news this morning. I saw the one that was carrying uh, the meat, adult content. Oh no! Yeah. Well, that wasn't in this area. No. I should be going going after that story it though. Spilled all over the highway. A uh, semi truck uh, was split in half when a train crashed into it early this morning in Lakeland. The crash happened at Ingram Avenue near or Oleander Street. No one was injured, but crews now have a big mess to clean up. This the truck was carrying chicken and beef that spilled all over the road. When the train hit the truck, splitting it down the middle. There was no details this morning on how the hell that even happens. Uh, LaJoyce Houston, a former Tampa police sergeant who was ensnared in a federal tax fraud case, will learn her punishment today. She pleaded guilty in August to a single charge of receiving stolen government property. She admitted that tax fraud money had paid off one of her credit cards. Her husband, former Tampa police detective Eric Houston, was sentenced in October to six months in federal prison after admitting to a similar crime. The attorney for the accused Seminole Heights killer entered a not guilty plea on his behalf at his arraignment on Tuesday morning. Hal Donaldson III, better known as Trey, waived his right to appear at his arraignment yesterday. Quote, I'd really like to see him. I'd really like to see his face, you know, said Gloria Felton, Ronald Felton's sister-in-law. If he did it, he got to pay. If he did it, he got to pay. Do I want him to get the death penalty? That's hard for me, you know. I'm a mother myself. It's hard. But whatever comes this way... Let it happen. And a court in Egypt has reportedly jailed to a uh, jailed for two years a singer who appear, appeared in a music video in her underwear while suggestively eating a banana. Uh, Shima Ahmad, a 25-year-old known per- professionally just as Shima, was arrested last month after the video sparked outrage in the conservative country. On Tuesday, she was found guilty of inciting debauchery and publishing an indecent film. The video's director was also sentenced to two years in prison in absentia. And that is stuff you should know for Wednesday, December 13th, Mr. Torres. Uh, real quick, uh, there's a cable that Cords gave you yesterday. If you can toss that over, it um, has the, uh, the mini input. But I also, while you uh, uh, dig for that. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? A cable that Cords gave me yesterday? Yeah, remember it has the little mini out um, that you were going to use for um your trip out to uh that's that's downstairs yeah that's downstairs somewhere you talking about the long extension just mini was it mini to quarter yep yeah that's downstairs some uh, on a table oh okay all right i'll let them know um i so. think i saw it uh where the uh, the cookies were oh there we are go. i think that's where i saw it yesterday oh, okay well i also wanted to remind people we've got two general admission tickets to the gasparilla music festival um up for grabs you know i mean we want to reward everybody we're having uh, uh, a lot of people tuning in this morning uh, so thank you to everybody for tuning in please like and share uh, our broadcast this morning but if you want to win the two tickets to the gasparilla music festival all you got to do is go to the wake.show let me get that graphic up for you here go to the wake.show 
not.com, thewake.show. Uh, at the very bottom, there's going to be an enter to win form, and you fill that out. It's not going to go to anywhere but other than uh, to Chris and I for to reach out to you from time to time, tell you about what Stalk we're up you. to. That's right. <laughs> um, uh, but coming up in the first week of March, uh, first, second week of March um, is the Gasparilla Music Festival at Curtis Hickson Park. Always an amazing event. Two days of incredible bands. And uh, for more information on the Gasparilla Music Festival, go to gasparillamusic.com. So, oh, he said it's downstairs. Uh, that, that cable you gave me yesterday, the last I saw it was sitting on the t- same table with the cookies. What about that XLR that goes from 8-inch to XLR that you have? All right. That, that I do have in here. So, um I'll, I'll take you this stuff while we're <laughs> <laughs> well you know um uh, again and coming up we've got uh james downstairs a very talented pianist uh who's what's gonna, his last name can i look him up do you, do you know his last name uh I, it's escaping me right now um uh, but chords 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 will text it to me once he gets back down there um but we're going to talk about christmas and ivory a fundraising event happening in the wesley chapel area on december 16th and we'll have his mom stephanie uh talk to us a little bit about that in uh, just a bit so she'll come up here we'll talk to her he's going to stay down in the studio and then we'll just cut to him uh yeah i think that'd probably be the best way okay. to do it all right uh it's coming up here in just a few uh would you would you can may may i now we we got through stuff you should know yeah I also want to go through the comments because people are obviously wanting to chime in on on you opening up this morning and, and talking about your struggles. All right, please do. All right, so um, you know, good morning to everybody watching. Um, <laughs> Elliot says he's the exact opposite of whatever a perfectionist is. <laughs> uh, Lisa says it's uh, 21 degrees in Tennessee. Uh, good luck nice. to you with that. Uh, Jessica says she can relate to all those things you were talking about, Fisher. Uh, she says her husband has task anxiety, especially about phone calls. Um, and uh, and she also gets that kind of self-destructive depression. Uh, she's still building up to talking to a doctor about it. So, sure. I mean, this could be uh, very helpful for her because, again, I think a lot of times for people to make that decision to actually seek help, uh, it oftentimes is hearing somebody else talk about going through those same issues. You know, I've had the thought of uh, bring, you know, like we're bringing Eric on every week to be a nutrition coach to bring on somebody else in the mental health field to talk That'd about mental health. And we can line that up with Kelly. I think uh, we could probably line that up with uh, Kelly from Art International, uh, accelerated response oh, therapy. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah, they they have just your straight up therapist there. Right. Yeah, these are therapists that Clinical are learning. Clinical psychologists. Yeah, they're learning a new uh, procedure, a new. Uh, for PTSD. Uh, for, uh, right, for people with PTSD, right. Okay. Because, because but I, they're therapists. Because there's a part of me that wants to go, you know, call somebody or whatever and go, hey, listen, you know, I want you to, I want to do, uh, come, you know, have a weekly therapy with you, but I want it to be live on my show. Yeah. But I already know the answer. The psychi- psych- uh, psychologist is going to go, no. Right. Uh, because you're not go- you're going to be in a performer state of mind. You're not going to sure. be you're not going to be Christopher Michael Fisher in those moments. You're going to be Fisher, and you know there's only so much work you could be done. So at best, it would be like you'll have oh. your wall up. You'll have you know there's there's a psychological component right. that's going to be up. Right. Um, I won't allow myself to be as vulnerable like this as I would be sitting in somebody's you know yeah. office. Uh, um. And uh, Lisa uh, says, the honesty of being a human being is what makes you real, Chris. That's why I keep listening. Uh, If it's cathartic for you, I promise it will be cathartic for others. Um, And then she she also says, that's what makes uh, your show real. Um, And... uh, Good yeah, morning or good night. But I'm, I'm always concerned, to, guys, that the real sometimes the real can, you know, uh, uh, you know, bring the room down, like I said. And I, so I, I got to I got to be careful with that stuff. Well, and even our buddy David Capote chimes in. He goes, he also suffers from procrastination due to anxiety. So, you know, this is uh, I'm sure this is a very common thing. I mean, now me, I'm just a procrastinator. I mean, <laughs> like I'm just a straight up procrastinator because when it comes to crunch time, I'll I'll just head down and crank it out and get it done. And I perform well in those types of situations. And I normal and I normally do too. That's what, you know, so when I would write those papers, I was talking about going back to high school and wait till the night before I'd still. So it evolved well. into anxiety. Well, I, I, I don't know. I, I really, I, okay. you know, I, we could sit here and go back and forth and I've got, you know, it could be this, it could be that, but in the end, it just could be this anxiety's building. And then I'm just piecing to get, you know, connecting a couple of dots to make sense 
to have it make sense for me, but yeah. it's really not what's you know happening. So let's go. Let's go back. So is perfectionism good? Perfection is good, right? Question mark. Everyone knows that procrastination is bad, but perfectionism is, uh, perfectionism is fine, right? Wrong. Both are fraught with difficulty, and they tend to appear together, forming an infinite loop that can destroy your productivity and your psyche. Of the two, of the two, the perfectionism seems to be more subtle and difficult to identify. How do you determine whether you are the perfectionism persuasion? Perfectionists tend to focus on product to the exclusion of the process, and those results uh, better be successful. Perfectionists tend to focus on product to the exclusion of of process and those results better be successful. I'm not quite sure what they mean by that. Despite often being achievers, perfectionists feel uh, feelings of satisf satisfaction about achievement are temporary because they believe there's always more to do, be and accomplish. One of the regrets that I, I have uh, throughout all of my shows is they were never good. Um, and especially once I got over to the bone, I was only at a 1025 the bone for about uh, six months. And I did the show, the producer of the show was uh, Kelly Crangy. Awesome. I love her. But every day, every night we would get off the show and she would say, oh, good show. And I'd go, no, it wasn't. And it would just like, it would almost bother me if you compliment. Well, yeah, hell, there's plenty of you that met me out. Uh, you've comp I guarantee you, you've complimented my show. And there was, and I, there was a, at minimum, a joke that came back at you. Usually that joke is, oh, there's got to be other better stuff uh, out there to listen to. And so I don't know. So that this, this plays into that perfectionist are their own harshest critics, frequently berating themselves over any small thing that went wrong. You're like, well, yeah, but that's what makes you great, man. Well, that's what makes that, that project you're working at great. Da -da -da. It can. It can, but it also can do the exact opposite because it's not about, because in the perfection, in my mind, there's, I've never reached perfection, there, and there never will be. If you're like, well, no, no, that's the, that'll just make that project great. Well, not necessarily, more than likely, that won't be good enough either, even something that was considered great. Perfectionists tend to do things in fits and spurts. And that's what you were kind of talking about there. You wait until the last second and uh, until, you know, crunch time forces you, forces your hand, and then, boom, you jump into action, uh, starting off gang bucks, uh, busters only to collapse in exhaustion. The unreasonable striving for perfection st uh, stems from attempts to preserve a sense of self-worth that hinges on the expectations of others. Well, that's not good. That means I have no self-worth uh, and whatever my self-worth is, is predicated on whatever the person in front of me is thinking or saying about me. Uh, it is often referred to as the highest form of self-abuse. Great. Because perfection simply does not exist. But that's exactly what it is. I mean, I just sit, sat here and watched you basically abuse yourself. I mean, it, it was not a Louis C.K. kind of a way. No, it was it was painful to watch. It was painful to sit here across from you and, and, and see the the pain that you're going through. I mean, you know, and, 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 and so, I mean, yeah, would I rather be talking about the news of the day and joking around and that sort of thing? Yeah, but I'm also worried about you. And I, I also, you know, I'm, I'm concerned that, again, this could just, you know, snowball into something worse. Again, I don't think it ever will. I, I hope so, I but, uh, but, with, but there's, still there's no, no guarantee. No. Uh, you know, I have a couple of fail safes that I put in my head. Um, well, that I'm hoping are fail safes, and one of them is um, my nieces and nephews. There's six of them. Yeah. So of course, uh, you know, you don't. I don't want to have you know my my brothers and their their families having to explain that kind of stuff. Yeah, but look, and then you know you you're getting choked up just even thinking about it. You know, but. Again, going to Heath Ledger, Chester Bennington, you know, I mean, you, you talk about these and we're obviously using celebrities as an example because everyone knows who they are. But these are guys who had families, you know, and and not True. not just extended families. I mean, we're talking about kids at home who depended on them and and they still could not overcome their demons and decided to take their own lives. And there's another fail safe in my head that I has been there a little bit longer than my nieces and nephews. And that is my ego because I'd have to admit that this universe beat me. And yeah, I, but see, that's where I'm worried the most because right now your career is in flux, right? Like, let's be straight up. I mean, we're right. being very transparent on this yeah, show. Yeah. I mean, your career is in flux, right? You went yeah. from doing something that you've loved to do for 15, 20, 30 years. I don't know how long it's been, uh, 55, 25, um, uh, but, um, 
it's in transition. Like, we don't know. Like, you may end up back on the radio over at, at, at B, whatever it's called. and Or, you know, this may be the next iteration of your career. Or it may be none of those things. And as someone who was in radio for a fraction of the time that you've been in the business, it was really hard to make that transition and give it up. Because even today, I get the itch. I mean, I do. There are, t and I've told you this. I'll go on to industry websites and I'll take a look at even what little part-time gigs or whatever little uh, opportunities they have because it's in your blood. It's it just it's there. It's it's as it's like much, crack. What well, you know? Yeah, it's right. as much of you as as your heart, as your lungs, <laughs> as it, and and it was really hard for me to get away from that. And and that's honestly why uh, I love doing this show because it you know while this isn't what I'm getting paid to do. Um, it, it feeds that animal, it feeds that passion. And, uh, and I haven't had that for, uh, I'd say probably the better part of 10 years. Uh, well, let's, uh, let's move away from that, uh, for right now. But I mean, like I said, we are going to be coming back to this, uh, to a certain degree when we get Eric on, uh, coming up at, uh, 845 this morning, uh, from TNL nutrition coaching. Uh, but for right now, let's go through uh, some of the uh, stuff that we definitely want to get to. And then, uh, whenever, uh, the musical guest is ready to go, we're going to go to them. Um, yeah, I think it should be ready any minute now. Okay. So the, the biggest news of the day, obviously, in our country is a stunning victory aided by scandal. Democrat Doug Jones won Alabama's special Senate election on Tuesday, beating back history, an embattled Republican opponent, and the president, who urgently endorsed the GOP rebel Roy Moore despite a litany of sexual misconduct allegations. It was the first Democrat Senate victory in a quarter century in Alabama, one of the reddest of red states and proved anew that party loyalty is anything but sure in the age of Trump. Yeah, it was nonsense. A, what's that? Go ahead. I'll let you finish. No, no, that's because I'm just reading out of the, uh, you know, the uh, Tampa Bay dot com, which is the uh, Tampa Bay Times. Right? All right. First of all, as promised, I was going to pull out my little <laughs> my little prop here. All right. Because uh, uh, America still great. Always has been. All right. Um, and, and I'm not knocking Trump for that. I'm just saying that last night was about Roy Moore. It wasn't about Donald Trump. It wasn't about the Republican Party. It wasn't about the Democrats getting their act together and like there's this wave of liberalism coming. No, it's none of those things. This was about an incredibly flawed candidate who should not have run in the first place. Um, and the party machine did what it was supposed to do. It got behind the candidate. Um, you know, but let's remember... President Trump, and I'm not defending him, I'm just pointing out the facts, he def he uh, endorsed Luther Strange, who had been appointed by a very flawed, and now, uh, uh, and now well, I'm forgetting the word, um, disgraced governor um, in Alabama. And so this election was already in trouble, even before Roy Moore became the candidate. Okay, you had a disgraced governor who appointed... Uh, his attorney general, who was supposed to be investigating him, to the Senate. Oh, wow. And then, and then the grassroots people saw Luther Strange as the establishment guy. Regardless, Donald Trump got behind Luther Strange. Luther Strange loses to Roy Moore. And these allegations come out 30-plus years later. Mind you, this guy's run for the Supreme Court of Alabama. And th those allegations never came out then. But they came out now. And I'm not saying that they're not valid, but you now have, again, a very controversial subject running for Senate. He should have dropped out of the race, allowed the party to either have a writing candidate or have somebody else put up in that role. And this was a repudiation of Roy Moore. That's it. I agree. And uh, the story goes on to say that many Republicans viewed the defeat of Moore as perhaps the best outcome for the party nationally. Agree. Despite despite the short uh, term sting, and that's what uh, you know a lot of politicians, a lot of Republicans, um, they they thought they had to overlook what may these allegations. Yeah. For the party's sake. Look, I feel horrible for, you know, people like my friend Rachel, who we had on the show yesterday, who had to sit there and pull the lever for uh, Roy Moore. Um, and it's not, you know, because, you know, people are going to be jerks and they'll be like, oh, well, you voted for a pedophile and blah, blah, blah. And this and that. No, it, look, I tell people all the time, the Republican Party isn't about one individual. It's not about Donald Trump or Mitch McConnell or no. Paul Ryan or Roy Moore. It's about a set of values and principles that go beyond one flawed individual. And that's what it should be for all these parties and every institution out yeah. there. 
Uh, but we've talked about this before that when times like these, man, uh, these institutions get together and they and they start circling the wagons and going the best thing for us is to go after the victims, you know, yeah. uh, instead of going, oh, wait, we we're sorry that someone within our ranks uh, did this. W- watch what we do now. Well, and it's a nastiness. Then, you know, you take yeah. off their head, metaphorically, take off their heads, get them out of there, yeah. and then go, okay, listen, now let's get back to what we do here at Penn State or uh, the Catholic Church or the, you know, whatever political party. Well, and it's the nastiness of partisan politics that you have people out there and prominent people who will go out there and basically – call you a pedophile or a supporter of pedophiles simply because you decided to support uh, the the party that represents your values and principles um, over voting for someone who is equally flawed in terms of valuables, values and principles in Doug Jones, uh, you know, who was at the end of the day basically boxed in as a pro-abortion candidate. So the story goes on to say that the fiery Christian conservatives' positions have alienated women, racial minorities, gays, and Muslims, in addition to the multiple allegations that he was guilty of sexual misconduct with teens, one only 14 when he was in his 30s. A number of Republicans declined to support him, including Alabama's long-serving Senator Rich Shelby. But Trump lent his name um, to the national GOP's resource to Moore's campaign in recent days. Had Moore won, the GOP would have been saddled with a colleague accused of sordid conduct as Republicans nationwide struggle with Trump's historically low popularity. Senate leaders had promised that Moore would have faced an immediate ethics investigation. But that's not going to happen. So now do we have uh, discussions about polls again? Yeah, uh, now the polls were all were all wrong. Yeah. Um, and uh, interestingly enough, we talked about it yesterday. Fox News actually had the only, I think, the only well, major prominent poll that that got it close to right. No, they 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 had it. Uh, well, it was like ten point difference, right? right. So, and and it looks like he's it's about a one and a half point difference, but he has not conceded yet. No. He's waiting until December twenty sixth, I think. Or I, I don't know if before then he'll he'll go, all right, I see, I see, you know, what's going on here. But it gets certified, I believe, the day after Christmas. It gets certified the day after Christmas, and then um, if it's within a half a percentage point, less than half a percentage point, yeah. then it's an automatic recount. Yeah, Other- well, you know, and the big narrative, uh, even listening to some radio on the way in this morning, is, is that uh, the write-in votes really made the difference. There were about 20,000 write-in votes. The difference in the election was about 12,000. Uh, so a lot of people, I mean, small margin in comparison to the overall voting totals, but uh, still, they, they made the difference in deciding this election. Um, yeah, I, I saw Donald Trump. Uh, oh, yeah, that's tweeted, the other big story. Tweeted something about that. No, so, yeah, so he actually sent out a congratulatory tweet to Doug Jones, which shocked everybody because, of course, you know, everyone was expecting scorched earth. And uh, he was just going to light up Twitter. And no, he sent out a congratulatory tweet. Ooh, he pulled it down and retweeted it. He did what? He pulled it down and retweeted it because at the end of the original tweet was just the word used. Oh, wait, no, no. That's a different tweet. Never mind. Never mind. That's oh, what's her say. face. Good morning. No, that's lightweight. Chris Moore. Uh, that's lightweight Senator Kristen Gildenbrand, a total flunky for Chuck Schumer. Oh, that's and, another That's another. That's issue. something different. Yeah. Uh, we do have. We will come back to that. But yeah, he tweeted out a congratulations to Doug Jones and a hard fought victory. The write in votes played a very big factor, but a win's a win. Uh, the people of Alabama are great, and the Republicans will have another shot at this seat in a very short period of time. It never ends, um, is what he uh, tweeted there. I don't understand why the focus. Wow. Yeah, got it's it's like talking to uh, you know my buddy the other day, and he's like, "Well, he's only president because the electoral college." Well, those are the damn rules, <laughs> okay, right? Well, he exactly he right. only got elected because of the write-in vote. Well, what the hell's wrong with that? <laughs> you know, so, the the again, as you kind of mentioned in the in the <laughs> article, you know, the brief the brief shining spot here for the Republican Party is is that this seat will be up for election in two years. And I think just about any other Senate candidate would have swept the floor with Doug Jones by double points. So he follows that. He had a tweet this morning. Of course uh, he did. Yeah. Two hours. It's it, uh, the six o'clock hour for whatever reason he wanted to explain why he originally endorsed Luther Strange. But I love I love that. You know, I talk about my ego and the narcissism that I have to uh, wrangle with. But, man, this is a whole nother level. The reason I originally endorsed Luther Strange, and then he writes parenthetically, and his numbers went up mightily. (laughs) (laughs) All about the numbers. All about the numbers. Uh, Is that I said Roy Moore will not be able to win the general election. I was right. 
Mr. President, you're always right. Why don't you and Kim Jong-un go uh, hang out with each other <laughs> so you two could always be right about everything and be the two best golfers on the planet? Uh, <laughs> so let's go to the other tweet that we were talking about here. Um, lightweight Senator Kristen Gildebrand, a total flunky for Chuck Schumer and someone who would uh, come to my office begging for campaign contributions not so long ago and then parenthetically writes and would do anything for them. Mm-hmm is now in the ring fighting against Trump. Very disloyal to Bill and Crooked. Used! Uh, uh, the used part? Is he saying he feels like he's been used by her? Or Maybe. do you mean to spell something else? All right, I don't want to... So anyway... Uh, I don't know what you're alluding to, but I mean... Well, does he, is he saying that... Okay, because this uh, Gildebrand came out against... Uh, you right. know, said something... He's saying that she's willing to do anything for com com campaign contributions, and obviously given the current climate of sexual harassment and and abuse and all that stuff. Right, it sounds like he's alluding that she was willing to you know do something sexual for him. Sure. Um, is that the case? Did she go to his office? Because he says, begging for campaign contributions not so long ago and would do anything for them? Did she come in going, hey, uh, Mr. President, if I could get some contributions. <laughs> oh, my God. Why, what, what's he trying to say? All right. Listen no. up for that. Um, the, over the summer, we were outraged. The, the country was outraged. After seeing video of uh, these a-holes dragging a shark behind a boat. There were three of them. And we were concerned, everybody was concerned, that there would be no, no charges, nothing you could charge them with. Well, after four months, they have charged them with felonies. Very excited about it. And what a state wildlife commission called, official called a fairly unique case, investigators on Tuesday charged three men in connection with a viral video that showed anglers dragging a shark behind a boat on a rope. In the video, the men uh, laugh each time the shark's body slams into the water. The video came to light in July after someone sent it to celebrity shark hunter Mark the Shark uh, Cortiano who said he was shocked and horrified, noting on social media, for once in my life, I agree with PETA. Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission investigators determined that the dragging took place on June 26th in the state waters of Egmont Key, which means what? It's in Hillsborough County's jurisdiction, right here in Hillsborough County. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, FWC investigators and Hillsborough prosecutors spent four months on the investigation. Uh... Hopefully they were diligent and this stuff sticks. I don't know if it's going to or not. Um, but among the three men charged, <laughs> proud to be an American, or at least I know I'm free-ish. Among the three <laughs> men charged is Michael Wenzel, 21, of Palme Palmetto, who is, was the captain of the boat, and friend Alex Compathicaris, star of the MTV reality show Siesta Key. Uh, the Compathicaris tied to the case as well as the video that appeared to show him shooting a hammerhead shark sent the news about the video into headlines around the country, led a swirl of controversy around the show's premiere. All right, so uh, Wenzel faces two felony counts of aggravated animal cruelty, one misdemeanor for using an illegal method to catch a shark. The felony counts are each punishable by five years in prison and up to $10,000 in fines, although any punishment will likely be less than the Mexican. Uh, maximum. Uh, Robert Lee Bo Benock, 28 of Bradenton, faces the same felony misdemeanor charges as Wenzel. He is the son of the Manatee County Commission Cherry, Chair Betsy Benock, while Wenzel is the son of the county planning director. And this just plays into stereotypes of powerful people's kids. Of thinking course. they do it. You know, you, you find out that they're politicians' kids that were dragging a shark behind a boat and laughing as they tortured it. And you go, ah, of course, of course it was. Um, and I, that's not that's not fair because I'm, I'm sure there's a many politicians out there who have great children who are doing great things and contributing to society. Um, third man in charge is Spencer Heinz, 23 of Palmetto. He is facing just two felony charges. All three of them turn themselves in. Uh, all right. So, well, I'm glad those guys are going down um, because, I mean, again, it, it's obviously a very gray area. You cut know, to you. Between being like pro hunting and, uh, 
you know, and allow allowing people to fish and hunt and all that stuff as a sport, you know. But to see these guys basically torture an animal like this, uh, I, I mean, it, it's just a pretty disturbing video to watch. And under any other circumstances, uh, I think they would be treated just as harshly as criminals. Uh, and so I'm glad to see that they're doing something about it. Me too, very much so. All right, we welcome into the studio now a uh, special guest this sp- this morning, Stephanie. Um, and your son is downstairs right now in our main studio, in our main facilities, and he's going to be playing some music for us. So uh, tell us a little about yourself, your family, and what's going on. And happy holidays. Merry Christmas. Welcome in. Merry Christmas to you, too. Thank you very much for the invitation to come here today. Um, yes, well, on Saturday, we have a wonderful Christmas concert that my son, James Williams, is going to be performing in with um, other singers, dancers, uh, musicians. Is there a website or a Facebook uh, event page or something like that I can go to real quickly? I want to put it up. Christmas on and Ivory. Uh, on Facebook? Or on Facebook. All right, Facebook. And search Christmas and Ivory. Christmas and Ivory. All right. There you are. And the main reason that we hold these concerts is to um, involve the youth into the arts and to um, raise the awareness of different um, charities and organizations that need help in the area. We try to stay local so that we are serving the Tampa Bay area. And it's, it's a good way for the, the, the youth to get involved with charity work and giving back to the community. And um, going back to James, he started, well actually he taught himself a classical piano seven years ago. He doesn't read music. Um, and it's he amazing plays, to me. Plays by ear. Now he's he's autistic. He has autism. He was diagnosed he's, with autism when he was three years old. Okay. And there's a spectrum when it comes it comes to autism. The, the, I'm, I'm very ignorant, by the way. So you're going to have to. <laughs> I, I I don't. You know, I'm very ignorant. So you're going to help uh, yeah. fill some blanks for the, me. There is a, a spectrum. He is very um, high function on the spectrum, okay. and and um, there are varying degrees to um, to low function at with um, people who need a lot of help. Um, so how old was he when he started playing the piano, just picked it up and started playing? Really, seven years ago. So he was 13. He was okay. 13 when he started. And um, now at 20, Then where were you guys? Were you out somewhere and he started tinkling on there or whatever? They no, could? really, at home. He, was that home? Yes, yeah. He was, there was a piano in uh, my mother's house and he used to play there during the summer. The whole thing really started when uh, uh, there was a talent show at the school. And he decided that this kid that kept winning the talent show needs to stop winning that talent show. <laughs> oh, so he got a little competitive, uh, you know, he, jolt, and I'm like, hey, he, he, that guy's not that good. I, he, he wins every year, and it's annoying me. No, I can true. play better than him. The, the guy was very good. I mean, oh. the, the kid that was was very good, but he decided James decided that uh, it's enough. time it's time that he stopped winning <laughs> that competition. That's great. And so through the summer of 2010, he he practiced his heart out. And come December, when the competition was, he actually won that competition. But no so. professional training, no training at all. No, no professional training. He he used to take lessons when he was younger, maybe about seven or eight, but he didn't learn the traditional way. So he wasn't picking up reading the music. Now, it came from his heart, and that's that's the thing about it. He plays from his heart. It's not necessarily how the notes are written on the paper. But he hears the melody, he likes the tune, he picks the most difficult piece he can f- hear and decides that that's the piece that he wants to learn. That, is, that just blows my mind. So are, are mom and dad musically inclined? I used to play the piano when I was younger, but never Nothing to the like standard that, that James has reached in such a short space of time. So are you, are, when, you're watch, when you're watching this happen, and even still today, uh, can, can you see his process? Can you see how his brain is figuring this stuff out? Or you just sit back in amazement and go, wow. I step back in amazement and say, wow. <laughs> I mean, I can see how he does it, but I, that's not how I could ever learn a piece the way he does. So Christmas in Ivory is this Saturday, 7 and 9, and I see, according to Facebook, that it's going to be uh, uh, three days from now, 54 degrees, 75 will be the high, partly cloudy. <laughs> and this is going to be at Harvester United Methodist Church. That's correct. Uh, tickets are available online at a moment with the Yes. A moment with the classics.com. Now, will he be the only performer? Or no, there's, the other? there's other performers there. We've got a dancer, singers, uh, musicians. So it's a, a great night of entertainment. Plus, there'll be food and there'll be a time for early gift shopping. Uh, so, is he ready to go downstairs? Yeah, it looks like it. Uh, we've been cutting two of the camera down there. It looks okay. amazing. Okay. Um, and so uh, if you want to do the, 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 the iPhone thing, the, the phone camera 
we can we, we can try that little trick. We um, can, we probably should have try, you know tested this out earlier. So I'm pulling it over uh, right now. Do a tap anywhere to show and hide layer track. So join. So you need to. Do, if I hit join call, um, will that go right to you? Which one do you have? The pink shrimp. The pink shrimp. No, I don't. Um, here, hold on. I gotta send you the link, so I'll, I'll let me email this to you real quick. All right. So what what we're doing? Because we, this is a new show, right? That we have here, and um, you know, I, I come from a radio background, which is a, a very different technology. Obviously, we don't even have cameras. Mm -hmm. And but one of the things that we can do with our system is all of a sudden turn our phones into a remote camera and wow. microphone. Uh, but we haven't. We haven't played around with it yet, so that's what we're going to do right now. You're going to send this to, uh, to me through Messenger or through no, a text? through email. Oh, email. Okay. Yeah. Oh, excuse me? And so if you hit that link, it should uh, go right to the app, and then that way I can plug you in that way. All right. Accept. Tap anywhere to show. Okay. Now, do I hit join call, or do you just, or are we live now? Uh, hold on. Because then what we're going to do, we'll just walk right downstairs, right into the studio, right. introduce your son, and let him start playing. And have we, have you, have, has he uh, got a set? He's doing one, two, three songs. Did you guys talk about that no, yet? No, no, no. Not yeah, really. We'll, not in we'll any great depth. He's go ahead and mute the microphone there. No, you can use the microphone there. Oh, he's he's got um, he's got a couple lined up. Okay, so, yeah. all right, yeah. all right. So I'm not getting a video from you. Do I hit join? I, I'm hitting join call there. Oh, one, yeah, yeah, three, two, that. one. That's probably the uh, difference there. There we go. <clears throat> now you got something from me. Now I do. All right. So you come with me then. And we're going to go downstairs and, uh, and and set up your song. All right. All right. <clears throat> and now we'll be using the microphone from... <laughs> It'll be from coming through your phone. Through your phone. Um, and and uh, try, not try not to get, to people, get people, people too dizzy. Too dizzy. All right. <laughs> this is going to be fun. So they're going to get to actually see the background area of uh, Bake More Pies here. This is our backstage cool. area. And you can go ahead and narrate, Chris. All right. So uh, this is the... Uh, this part of bake more pies here we're going from one studio our green room here into another studio and this is where we have james how you doing james Good. all right are you ready sir yeah. all right this is your camera right here ladies and gentlemen enjoy
Thank you, everybody, for uh, listening, watching The Wake Dot Show. There we go. James Williams performing live in our studio. Is that your, is that your top you... 40 voice there? No, that's more of my adult uh, contemporary voice. So. <laughs> all right. Um, thank you so much. Really nice meeting you both, uh, or all three of you. And uh, let's see here. You can cut to uh, this camera. They, they gave us a little uh, Christmas present, you and I. Nice. Yeah. We'll have to go through and uh, divvy It'll the... be gone before the show's over. We'll have to divvy this up here in a few. Well, I got my own. Oh, you got one too. Oh yeah, man. Okay, she hooked it up. Well, that was uh, that was amazing. Thank you so much. And I'm out of breath. It's because, you know, it's, is that why you were laughing? It's a long walk downstairs. Right man. before Eric gets on too. Yeah, he's uh, gonna laugh at you. Yeah, you know he's watching already. Yeah. Um. So uh, that's this Saturday at Harvester United Methodist Church on Collier Parkway in Atlanta Lakes. T- tickets are available at a moment with the dot com. And uh, thank you once again again to uh, James Williams for performing and his. Uh, I posted Steph- it in the comments and pinned the comment there. So for, if anybody wants to attend on the 16th, uh, that that'll be where you can uh, get all the information and your tickets. I'm gonna. Uh, I, I record. I hit record on my phone down there. Yeah. It was so interesting because he was plugged into the system, but there was no monitors. You noticed that he had headphones on, right? So this is what I heard down there. You hear that? Yeah. Like a lot of tapping. It sounded amazing up here. But that's all we heard downstairs. Huh. It was so cool. And I was talking to his uh, his parents, and, and uh, they go, that's what we hear all night. All night long. He puts his headphones on, and you just hear it. They go, it sounds like a stampede coming in the distance. Yeah. Uh, but then, obviously, on your end. Like rainfalls. Like, tap tap it. Uh, but obviously on your end, it sounded very, very different. Oh, it sounded incredible. And uh, we got amazing comments from people watching. Uh, um, uh, Don says amazing. Catherine says wow. Uh, James ambidextrously brilliant from James Lance. Uh, Jerry Gilmore, crazy good. Uh, Teresa uh, says wow. Uh, James also says show the world. Uh, Chris Moore, uh, plotting him in his beautiful transition. He says seamless. Uh, Chris Brown, loving it, said uh, this is wonderful. And uh, Lisa, my word, amazing. All right, now we have to pull up Eric. Where'd you go, Eric? <clears throat> Are you Skyping him in? Uh, f- or we uh, Facebook him. Oh, Facebook him in. Yeah. Okay, got it. Um, by the way, did you uh, have you talked to Rachel Hammers yet? You know, yes. I texted her, um, and, and we texted a little bit last night, um, but. Uh, I think it's just uh, been a crazy morning. Um, uh, she she's not responded to my text, so um, you know she 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 also kind of feels that even though she voted for him, uh, she voted for Roy Moore. She uh, feels that at the end of the day, it's what's best for the party and best for Alabama. And yeah. because look, at the end of the day, this was going to be a huge distraction. All right. And right. If he got elected, the, the an investigation, an ethics committee investigation would immediately. It would. They would spend millions of dollars uh, on this investigation. What do you got there? Cut, go ahead and cut to the end. And uh, they, they would have had millions of dollars in investigations, and it would have been time wasted. It would have held up uh, probably some legislation. Um, what is it? What are we looking at? That's that's Eric. Oh, my God. I was like, what are you? I didn't. I wasn't sure what we were looking at. Holy yeah. cow. Ah, that's Eric. Gonna get that morning run in there, Eric. Yeah, uh, Erica Stratman. Uh, I already did twenty miles. Yeah, me? I'm sure you did. <laughs> no, I did. both ways uphill. Welcome back to the show, there man. You how how you go. doing, Eric? How you guys doing? Uh, we're doing all right this morning. I was looking forward to uh, getting you uh, getting you on today and uh, talking about nutrition. I thought this was our. Uh, I thought this was a good start for uh, character because. Uh, I feel like you've been Jack Frosting me all week, so uh, I, you know, wanted to make sure that you know you can uh, return the favor. Now you're nice and warm down there, so uh, we can uh, get this new week kicked off right. All right, so let me go to uh, let's do this right here because uh, you know he's been uh, a very good trainer, a very good coach, and every couple of days he reaches out to me. How you doing? Uh, you know, why don't you go ahead and start loading the stuff that you're eating into your app? And because, again, uh, a lot of people don't know he can see what you are putting into the app. Right. Even though he's in New York, um, you know, I met him years ago when he was here in the Bay Area, started a couple of gyms and uh, sold those, moved, moved the family up north. And and uh, uh, so so part of this deal. 
for him to help me is he has access to this, you know, what is it? My fitness pal, right? Yes, sir. My fitness pal. And so I give him access to it. And then he sees what I'm loading in every day. And what he sees is I'm loading in nothing every single day. Uh, so on Monday he texts me, he's like, Hey man. <laughs> and, and I really appreciate it. Hey, really... you're consistent. Let's, let's start with that. <laughs> Thanks. That's got some positive. Thanks. I appreciate that. So, uh, he hey. texts, he texts me on, um, uh, on Monday, like, Hey man, um, this is not about the show. This is about your long-term health. You know, I really want to help you. And so, you know, just start putting in the food and water intake, you know, and we'll go from there. And I, exactly. I te- and I text them back. I, I know that I read it earlier in the show, but I'm going to go ahead and I bring it back up here. Uh, because this is an important part of, of my development or something. I text him back. I'm trying. I have some serious anxiety issues when I go to do stuff like this. Very serious. It shuts me the F down. I spiral to the point of suicidal thoughts, and I hate it. <coughs> I'm calling a psychologist so I can work on that on my end, and I will do my best when I get home to log the stuff that I remember from yesterday and today. I'm really sorry. Thank you for your help. And you said, you know, you're like, no worries, brother. I'm praying for you. We'll get through this together kind of a thing. And uh, not only did I not call a psychologist, I said, I'm calling a psychologist. Not only did I not do that, I I still haven't uh, logged anything in into my app. Uh, So now here we are. (laughs) We're at Wednesday. Two weeks weeks of you trying to uh, help me and our listeners in this process. And I, I can't even do something as simple as open up an app and load in food. Hey. That's all right. I mean, you know, the, the key to understanding this is that it, it's, you know, the mindset of some folks, and I'm sure you're you're in the same boat, is that, you know, when you log it, you're worried about either the judgment or what you're going to see, and it's really just getting comfortable with knowing, okay, well, I'm already loading it into my body, so I'm not going to reveal any, you know, earth-shattering news when I actually put it into the app. But now we can quantify what's going on with that food. So it's, you know, if you're eating it, it already happens. So it's right. not There's, one of those things that it's not you like know, a, you're putting yourself, you know, you're putting something in there you're not doing anyway. Uh, so uh, let's go ahead and, and do that right here and right now. Okay. So uh, it, there's, it, if I, because like if, if when we get off the phone, I'll go, hey, man, I'll, when we get off the show today, I'll go ahead and load in the stuff from this morning and whatever I can remember from yesterday, but it won't happen. Well, but, I, I mean it in the moment that it's going to happen, but it won't. But we'll do this. So I'm trying to download the app right now. So I'm gonna I'm not gonna jump in the deep end of the pool just yet, but I'll but I'll get into the shallow end. I'm downloading the Johnny, app. Johnny, and, and I'm gonna I need you to do, buddy. I'm get gonna start tracking. Toe. I'm gonna start tracking my food nice. to hopefully encourage you to do the same because then we can go and see you know who's really uh, it, it's who can eat the most calories, right? That's what we're doing. Yes. <laughs> That, you know, because we were, we know this is all really going to start for everybody January 1st. Right. So, so this is just the... Uh, which is terrible timing for consume. me because that's the week of my birthday, but that's okay. <laughs> all right. January 7th for you then. Yeah. Now, well, you that's my birthday. Guys that has a birthday week? Is that a cheat week? A birthday? No, that's that, the 7th is my birthday. No, but do you have a... Are, oh. you, he said, are you one of those people that have a birthday week? Or? Oh, no, no, no. Okay. Oh, man, I've had people, I've had coaches work for me like, well, it's, you know, I can't come in this weekend. It's my birthday week. And I'm like, birthday week? I didn't know you were like the king of Egypt or something <laughs> in this big celebration. It's like it's a month you were born hey! one day, you know, high five some people. You're going to be 32 years old. It's not like you're going to be eight and, you know, you're going to Chuck E. Cheese, you know, but it is what it is. So. All cool. right. So here I so here I am. Uh, I've got I've got the app pulled out, uh, pulled up. This nice. is my fitness pal. Um, and I need to load in uh, some food. So I'm going to load in today. Oh, hold on. Uh, Eric, uh, Eric. Uh, Tom's asking you to turn the phone in landscape mode. <laughs> Let's go. Is that better? There we oh, go. Oh, look at that. Much better. Go, Tom. I appreciate it. Thank Perfect. you, Tom. Perfect. Thank That's, you. Yeah. That does, uh, that does ping some people's OCD when they see that uh, uh, portrait mode or whatever it's called. All right. So I'm loading in some food. Uh, so I'm going to hit. I'm gonna, at an angle. I'm going to. Even better. So I'm clicking <laughs> food. And now I'm clicking breakfast. <laughs> And then it brings up recent, frequent my foods, meals, and recipes. So, uh, what do I want to what do I want to do there? Uh, uh, you're gonna log if it's not something you've eaten recently. Now, if we shook up the bag of tater tots and you know uh, with salt, we know that's logged in there. So go ahead and just. All right. Hit so recent. do I hit create food or a quick ad? Quick ad. Well, Turn. no. At the very top, you have that search bar. 
Okay. Like if you're oh, on your yeah, diary, yeah. you just type, start typing in what you ate, All right, and it will uh, give you that, you know, that prompt of what it is. If it's something you ate recently, it'll, uh, it'll actually give it to you. But if you're you're not a, um, you know, if it's something new, you start out with that protein shake or something. Then, yeah, that's you know. what it was. So for me, it was a half a sugar cookie that I happened to find downstairs. All right. So nice. sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddle, 560. All right, so click on that. So it's 500, 563 calories. Yeah, that's sausage. I get you. Oh, geez. Uh, so my carbs uh, in that one sandwich, 30% of my carbs for the day. <laughs> <laughs> you ate so much. <laughs> oh, that is awesome. Uh, you I gotta mean, love this. I didn't even know you could do that. That was awesome. Uh, you, you can do it right on your phone. You, yeah, yeah, right on your phone. Uh, so, uh, so carbs thirty percent of my carb intake for the day with that one sandwich. Thirty <laughs> percent. Oh no. <laughs> that one. Dude, sandwich. that's our new uh, sausage, egg, and cheese McGriddle guy. There it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Uh, the fat wizard. Uh, <laughs> That sandwich was 55% of my fat intake for the day. Oh, you're so sorry. That's really good. Now, look at that. Now, th this is where, it, you know, the exciting part of all this tracking happens is because you know right now from just having that, if that's something you like to start your day with and that's, you know, your jam right now and it's just convenient, then, on Wednesday you know, mornings you know you've on. got to be a little more protein and carb heavy in your next meals, it's not something that's high fat. Okay. So if you're having something like, say, chicken and sweet potatoes for lunch, even though it sounds a little boring, it's uh, one of my favorite meals. I'm a, I'm one of those guys, and I'll give you guys a quick prep hack. Is Please do. You can go into Publix and get, like, uh, Purdue chicken shortcuts that are already cooked. They're in a bag. You literally just heat it up. It gives you nine ounces of chicken. It's a couple servings in there. You can get prepped sweet potatoes that already has, it has a very minimal amount of fat because they do make them a little flavored and cinnamon so you have that stuff there available ready to go if you're one of those people that aren't cooks if you're like hey i'm gonna prep 10 chicken breasts at the beginning of the week and kit you know cook 20 sweet potatoes hey get after it but we really want to make sure that you know you understand that it's not the end of the world but again we talked about the first week of blogging if you go way over your numbers i don't care that's fine I, know, I just want you to log this week. Right, you're just you it's just getting want... into that habit, right? Yes, exactly. All right, so hold on here. McDonald's hash brown went along with it. Let's see what that brings up. Was that today? It was this morning. So he had the oh, McGriddle man. and the hash brown. So the hash. Did brown you get the salt and shake it up? Uh, no, I did not. I did not. However, oh, you geez. should have shook it up. So. Uh, just the hash brown is 150 calories. Just the hash brown. Right. And just the hash brown would be 44% of my carb intake for the day. 53% of my fat intake. So that means I've, hit, I've exceeded my fat intake for the day between just the hash brown and the McGriddle. Right. And then protein only 3%. So I hit. So if we, were, if we were, you know, a few weeks into this process and you ate that, uh, if it's not your off time, because again, we already talked about like that quote unquote cheat time that we're going to have a half a day. You don't log anything when you go um, zombie, but we've already had many of those half days pass us. So it's okay. But, uh, as far as the, um, rest of the day was concerned, we would just look at saying, okay, well we need protein and carb only sources. So if, say you're going to have fruit and you're going to have some meat and you're going to have, you know, some potatoes, you might have some rice. Uh, maybe there's some bread in there, you know, if, the, if your body's not uh, um, aggravated by it. Again, that's getting, you know, a couple months into the process where we look, really look at mac, or micronutrients of your food, of what are the vitamins and minerals and quality of the food, and is your body reactive to any of those elements. But we're way before that, you know, this is the general, let's see how your body reacts to uh, just logging and, and staying consistent because you're going to see – immediate weight loss, you know, after that week of dialing in. So if the viewers don't know either, we uploaded your numbers uh, a little over a week ago, something specific, because when you're saying you've already exceeded your fat intake for the day, that's not something that was populated by MyFitnessPal. I went in and programmed that specific to your weight goals. 
All right, so what do I do now? So I've loaded in uh, just what I've had for breakfast uh, this morning. Right. Is there anything else I need to do right now with my app? How uh, much water or any other drinks that you've had? Diet uh, Okay, yeah. a coffee and a Diet Coke is what I've had today. So what do I, I load okay, that stuff into? In. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Now, black coffee is black coffee. It'll barely have any calories now. And that, know, those, uh, do those go under the food category, I guess? Yeah, when okay. you click on food, it'll 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 do it. The only thing that would be outside of that is your water intake, which we discussed. We want you to try to get in a minimum of a hundred ounces a day. Hundred ounces is uh, that's is that that's over a that's well over a gallon, right? No, gallons one twenty eight. So oh, okay. we're not even uh, we're not even hitting a gallon. You could easily hit a gallon, but you know, for you and for your viewers. Uh, it's important to understand you should always start your day with 20 to 32 ounces of water right out of the gate. Uh, I do it every morning. I got a 24 ounce cup or 32 ounce cup that sits on my counter. I fill it with my uh, my pitcher, down it, but I just don't leave the counter till I'm done. And uh, it does amazing things just to not only start the processes of your body, but Hydration is key. You want the first thing uh, hitting your stomach, not acidic coffee. You want it to be, because you better believe right behind that water is a cup of coffee. But right, there. right, all right. So I loaded my diet coke. That's zero percent, zero percent, and zero percent, and zero calories. Look at that. Look at that. So that doesn't make me feel horrible. And then uh, a cup of coffee. You said. Now, are you a cream and sugar guy or just coffee? Uh the 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 cream is an almond milk based cream, so it's not you know it's not dairy. Oh, good. Okay. All right. So let's go with a uh, coffee then. Mm-hmm. And there was no sugar, but just a uh, almond milk. I don't know. So we'll do that. Coffee with just coffee, one cup. We'll say that. All right. So, um, what? Wait, what what's? Because I did coffee, but. A terra, Altera, so that must be a specific kind of coffee. Cause that... Hey, Johnny, we got the sugar cookie face now. Uh... We have sugar cookies. <laughs> All right, let's just go with uh, let's just go with the coffee there at the top. I've All already right. got my stuff logged in. Two calories. Atta boy. What, nothing? Three Twizzlers and half a sugar cookie. <laughs> it's part now, of what... A... <laughs> That's hilarious. Now, now, Fish, what I want you to also think about, too, is... Uh, when you get a chance, scan the actual container on your almond creamer or whatever, so that way you know um, every time you put it in, you can say, hey, I had a couple tablespoons of this or or where you're at, so right. it'll help it out. And so, all, and so when he says a scan, I guess at the top here uh, of th this thing, you just hit this one button. And there's a scan button there. Or where did it go? Oh, when I loaded my food. In the course. upper right. <laughs> <laughs> He's having way too much fun over there, dude. This is I love the it. Best. No, I just listen. To this me. is the best. All right, so you'll see there, yeah, at the top right, there's a little scan code there. So you hit that and then scan whatever product you're talking about. Uh, and, exactly, and, and it already has it in there. I mean, they make it way, way easy to do. And if you, you know, and, and this is something I encourage anybody that's tracking is if you already know, like you're a lunch guy and you're like, hey, I always get this chef salad. I get this, you know, uh, BK number four, or whatever you get, loaded in uh, prematurely. Or we talked about, hey, you have a gig tonight, you have a couple beers, put them in now. Oh, you know, if you're going to do that, <laughs> put them in. So that way it's already prepped, ready to go. So you can plan around it for the rest of your day. What did you set a beer button? What did you set as your goal? <laughs> Are you talking about me? Do you remember what you said as your goal? For calories per day? Like, no, for weight loss or? Uh, uh, we you know, started honestly, out at about 230, 220. And so, I all right, so I put 225 on mine. Yeah, I think I put so 220. What, so your calorie counts a little over 2,000? Yeah. Okay. We're, we're about the same. All right, good. Okay. So uh, food then? Okay, beer. And if you want, Johnny, later after the show, just uh, shoot me a text. I can get your login and password and just actually set up what your goals would be because it's much different than what uh, my fitness pal defaults to. Now, is that the login and password to my Tinder account? Is that, or is that to, uh, I will <laughs> swipe right. I promise. <laughs> okay. So I, I go, uh, to, I go to click on beer and I, I cause I, if I want to put two beer, cause I, do I have to just go in and do add another beer? Or so there, what, yeah, what you'll do is go ahead. What kind of beer do you drink? Let's go ahead and log in. 
Uh, tonight will be some kind of a, a craft beer here locally. Let's let's say it's um, uh, three daughters. Okay. Uh, what the hell is it? Uh, three beach blonde. Uh, beer. So I would type in beer, three daughters, beach blonde, or just do three daughters and watch it, and, and I'm see sure what happens. Start coming up. All right. Because that's a local brewery here. They, I mean, they might not necessarily have it on here. Farmer's daughter beer. Farmer's daughter. It's no three daughters. All right. We're just gonna go for for right now. I'm just gonna uh, put right. in beer, and um, and then the first one here is a twelve ouncer. We'll uh, we'll just say. And then you'll see one hundred percent of my carbs down. in one beer. Oh, you're so. You, you'll see a couple lines down that it has the uh, number of servings. Uh, the two two servings exactly. So if you put two or three, whatever you know you're going to have. We'll, we'll start with two. <laughs> <laughs> well, why don't you go with three and overshoot it? Because right, then you could feel good if you only had two. All right, I, all right, all right. So uh, three it is, and that'll be a later on. Chris uh, now, Chris Brown uh, chimes in. He goes, give up beer for a, a month and I'm see sorry. what happens. Sorry, Eric. <laughs> no, sorry, sorry. <laughs> see, here's the thing. I've got karaoke tonight, okay, out at uh, Park and Rec. You're like, oh, you can't go do a four-hour gig without having a couple, three beers? Yes, but not karaoke because I can't sing. And, uh, well, you know, I'm just using it as, as an excuse. I'm, I'm loading in three yeah, beers right are. now, but now that I've got that in my head, I'm going to see if I can go out there tonight, do a four-hour karaoke right. gig, and uh, just drink water? Tequila. But see, yeah, I quite, I, 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 this to me is exactly like I was saying, the, the, I think it was the first time we talked to Eric, which is that it's the guilt factor, right? And so the calorie count now on the menu gives you that guilt factor where you're like, holy crap, I'm just, I'm about to eat, you know, 1500 calories in one meal. And so you decide to change up your menu choice. Tracking your food is going to do the same thing. You're now realizing that two beers pretty much maxes your calorie count out for the day or whatever it was, your carb count. And, and so, you know, now you're, you're second guessing your choices, which you're supposed, right? Which is a positive. Yeah. It's the point. It's the point of it. All right. So I've got that. Uh, we've got, we've got the process started now. Um, a little bit earlier in the show, we were talking about uh, anxiety and my anxiety issues and how this is uh, uh, one of the hurdles that I have to get over in order to get in half decent shape. And I, I and I and I need and I, I can't I can't do this right here with you and with Johnny. You know, I really do need to sit down with a professional and and try to get to the bottom because it's not even about figuring out what's what it is. I'm just now getting to the point in my life. At this age, within the last few months, really of going, all right, buddy, you have some kind of anxiety disorder. There's this, this is, this is the, no matter how many times you keep going around and around your head, no, I can fix this. I can, if well, soon I'll just do this and then I'll do this and I'll do this and everything will be fine. Well, I've been, I've been going through that cycle in my head for 20 years. And let me ask you this real quick. Yes, sir. What, how much caffeine do you take in a day? Uh, I have a cup, a cup of coffee in the morning, sometime, uh, sometimes a cup of coffee and a diet Coke by the time that I get here by six eight, or six thirty or so. Right. Um, then depending, but like, okay, for just, for instance, last night I'm out of Boulevard burgers. It's a gig that starts at seven o'clock. I've been up since four 30 in the morning. Well, by the time that is coming around, my body's ready to go to bed. I'm like, no, no, no. We're getting back, getting ready to go back out, right. set up some equipment and be on. It's not just about, I have to be on my game. So yeah. I, as soon as I get there, I grab a Diet Coke and I probably filled it, filled it up, you know, your typical, I don't know if that's probably 16 ounces or so at a restaurant. And I probably filled that up five, six times within two hours. Nice. The reason and, I ask is because you'll see a lot of uh, anxiety linked to caffeine. Like when you eliminate caffeine from your diet, you right there, got a hole in your lip. There's a layer of something on the top of this coffee. What is it? It's almond juju. What is that? <laughs> of course, I put it right is in my that, mouth. You got the whole almond? I don't know. This is the coffee that Cords brought in. What the hell did he put in it? Why am I eating oh. it? Anti-anxiety why is my, medication. Why is my, why is my uh, instinct to eat, eat something that looks like well, was brown it? snot? <laughs> Sugar? No. no. Lot, Cinnamon? Lot, maybe? Latte stuff? I don't know. It didn't really have a taste. Cyanide. Right. It's, there you go. All right, That's so you're saying uh, one of the things that will uh, help out my anxiety is uh, is uh, to to 
minimize caffeine. I know in your industry, it's tough to do that. Um, but it's really finding a different, you know, not only resting more, you know, you get to bed, it's tough to say, well, I'm going to, you know, get to bed and, and get nine hours of sleep when you get out of a gig and you got to get back up at four thirty. but maybe that's just, cra- you know, a nap during the day is going to help that out quite a bit. But, but that's what happened last you know, night, Eric. really so- looking at, uh, because, well, what I was going to say, that's what happened last night is, uh, you know, so then I have, then I, you know, I have five, six, seven diet Cokes to get me through, which I don't really need. It's more, again, that's anxiety too. I don't really need to keep going back to it. Uh, and it probably should be water because it's more of a nervous thing. I just need to keep, keep drinking something or whatever. And if it were yeah. water, if I could just switch it over to water, I'd be fine. But then, yeah, go. so I get home and now you don't get to bed till after midnight because I'm all jacked up on diet Coke. And then my alarm's going off at 430 and I'm going, uh, exactly. I need coffee and I need and something Diet fat Coke. and a Diet Coke <laughs> and something fat and fatty and whatever. Well, and Eric, yep. doesn't the Diet Coke exacerbate the problem because it spikes your 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 blood sugar and oh, then, yeah, and, then could, you, and then you crash harder? Exactly. You know, your uh, you know, the Diet Coke uh, myth about the well, it is zero calories and my fitness pal does not lie. You saw that. It That's is right zero calories but it's still the uh the chemical that makes up the sweetener in there still stimulates your brain to release insulin and elevate your blood sugar so really without the calories it's doing the same exact thing i mean there's some great studies you can see that uh it, it, you know it, they've done one with rats where they uh and it got my buddy to stop drinking diet coke the diet coke rat was five times heavier than the regular coke rat so the fake <laughs> stuff's worse than the Huh. Than, than the real than just plain sugar but again the real thing you know we're not going to uh you know we're not going to change all of your habits like i said first week this is something a few weeks in that we try to peel off i only dove into that pond because uh you're talking about anxiety i had it for a while and realized i'm like man i'm drinking coffee and then i'm drinking red bull and then i'm drinking monster and, then and i'm, I'm wondering coffee. why i'm going like this at three in the afternoon yeah but then you realize like you're like what was that what was that <laughs> You know, yep, yep. I can't put something in, you know, so you, you realize you're like, I'm so anxious. Why? And you go, oh, well, because of my caffeine. I mean, you Google it a little bit and get your googly Googlers out. And uh, I want to share with you the uh, the snow in my front yard right now. It's Jeez. pretty awesome here. Live from Freaking New York. No. Live yeah. from New York. It's Eric Strapman That's from TNL that. Nutrition Coaching. Um, all right, man. Thank you so much. Uh, for for coming on again this week, and uh, like you were saying, <clears throat> I, I feel like we are we are we're laying a foundation right now uh, to really start getting on track by the beginning of the year. <laughs> These few, for, for, uh, first few weeks that we have you on are uh, about getting me psychologically prepared. Exactly. And uh, when you think. <sighs> That's all I want you to think about when you're like, ah, I don't want to do it, and it's just going to get that. You know, you're just, ah. All right, that's what I'm going to sort of visualize as uh, as I'm going for that McGriddle tomorrow. No, skip the McGriddle. No. Go right for. Well, let's see how the rest of the day plays out, right? So uh, I'll be mm-hmm. checking on your nutrition uh, tomorrow morning because you'll do your uh, weight and measurements. Tomorrow's your weigh-in and measurement day, and uh, we can update the, the show on that uh, next Wednesday. Mm-hmm. But uh, – you know, you'll have your tape measure that you're picking up from Michael's or Joanne's or whatever today. And uh, tomorrow morning, you'll uh, just get up two minutes earlier and uh, uh, get that weight measurements in so we can uh, we can look at that. Eric, we'll talk to you soon. All right. Bye. Thanks, man. <laughs> All right. We'll get there. Or I'll get there. I'll get there. We'll get there. I'm we'll going to I'm gonna start good. tracking my... I just got to find... Uh, I, I need to go, just go ahead and finally sign up for that... Uh, uh, cardio boxing, boxing cardio thing. Just you know, don't e- don't even worry about that right now. Just spend the next week loading, you know, remembering to load everything into that app. And, yeah. And like you say, we'll compare it next in the in, you know, and we'll go, what the hell am I? And I put this kind of stuff in my body every single day. Oh How yeah. How am I still even cl- you know ticking? Yeah. But you're right. I look at my uh, chin here, and if I were just to give up beer for a month, yeah. Diet Coke. Even soda. I went hardcore on giving up soda for a while, and it was people were noticing. I mean, about a week or two later, people were already noticing. They were like, wow, are you losing weight? Oh, wow. Like, just stopping soda altogether. 
And I'm not a big soda drinker. Like you drink, you you drink uh, your Diet Coke on a daily basis, that sort of thing. Maybe I'll maybe have one soda a day, and that's typically with my lunch. Um, yeah, that's not bad at all. I don't. I don't um, but even that, I is mean, it one of those big sixty-four impact. ounces. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. One of those huge gulps. Yeah, you, you go back up and uh, fill it up a couple times before you leave the uh, leave the, yeah. uh, the the. Chris Brown restaurant. says uh, he's five weeks, no soda, no alcohol. Uh, the uh, David Capote's uh, asking if you've been tested for sleep apnea. I actually need to be tested for sleep apnea. I'm I'm almost a hundred percent positive that I have sleep apnea, um, and. Uh, <laughs> Chris is also chiming in because he's big on this nutrition stuff. He goes, if you don't drink enough water, your body will retain the water as well. And that soda is basically a meal with all the calories, just like beer. Uh, I the, There's been a, a few mornings where I'm sitting on the computer and I feel like I've had enough sleep. And my I'm falling asleep, you know, as I'm prepping yep. before we come in. Like, I can't keep my eyes open kind of a thing. And I wonder if... If it has a lot to do with the water, because my water intake right now, I'll go through phases where that's a sleep apnea. I don't know that I have sleep apnea. I, I have I'm pretty issues. sure I do. You might, but I mean, you might, but I, I don't know. I've I've never snuggled up next to you to you know listen to you snore all don't night. Lie. Don't lie, don't <laughs> lie, Fisher. But uh, yeah, we'll get this. Hopefully, get this thing figured out. You know, it's it's been a years. You know, I'm one of those people that. Uh, I guess you can say I've always battled with his weight and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And uh, and then I beat myself up horribly because I feel like it's my own fault and I should be able to uh, do this. You know, if other people can go, my wife can go to the gym every single day. How come I can't? Uh, but there's a lot of things that all of a sudden start coming into play in my head as I, yeah. as I, as I walk towards that gym door and open it up all of a sudden. Yeah. The, that's just like my, my, just the judgment, the, the all the stuff. Yo, you just get over, man. Just go do it. F you. <laughs> that's what sends me spiraling because those voices in my head, just get over, just do it. Those, those voices that I've heard all my life yelling back at me. And then I go, you're right. You're right. I should be able to do this myself. I'm an adult. I I I I'm, I should I I'm capable of other things. I should be capable yeah. of these simple things in my life. But well, and it's one of those things that right now is the best opportunity for you to get into these habits uh, of of taking care of yourself because you have the time and the flexibility to do it. Uh, you know, like, but do I have the mental capacity? Right. Well, I mean, that's a whole nother story altogether. You know, but but uh, I've told you, like for me. I'm happy with who I am and how I am. You know, I like going out and enjoying food and, you know, and eating what I eat. I, I don't like to I have to go somewhere and worry about what I'm going to order because, you know, uh, it may or may not be good for me or it may or may not, you know. And so, yeah, I mean, obviously that comes with the risk of your health and longevity. But yeah. but at the same time, like dying early. But it's it's. You know, if life isn't about enjoying yourself, I mean, it, it's, it's again, that to me, that's a part of life is enjoying uh, food and enjoying experiences. And, and so, I mean, I want to do this, right? Because, you know, I would like to lose a little bit of weight and kind of look a little better and that sort of thing, especially now back being on the single game. That's but, right. You know, but uh, at the same time, I'm I'm happy with who I am. And, and I also want, I don't want to get into that situation where you meet somebody and, and then when you fall off the wagon, right? So let's say I'd stop tracking and I stopped doing the exercising and that sort of thing. And I go back to my natural state. They'll be like, well, this isn't the guy that I met. Right. And that's my concern with doing all of this is, is that you meet someone at, at when you're at your kind of at your, your peak fitness, you know, you're and working you feel out. Like you have that, to maintain that. Well, you're right. You have to maintain it. Cause that's, that's how they met you. That's what they were attracted to. That's right. what, you know. So uh, this was an interesting show today, bud. It was. Oh, by the way, there's a video I want you to pull up. It's uh, and it's on our wake show, uh, wake dot show inbox. Uh, while you do that, I just want to remind people we have uh, two Gasparilla tickets to give away. A Gasparilla Music Festival coming up in the uh, I think it's the first weekend of March. Uh, I think it's the 10th and the 11th, I believe. Uh, if you go to gasparillamusic.com, you'll actually be able to. Uh, get all the details there, but what you won't get there are free tickets, and we've got two of them to give away. Uh, and all you've got to do is go to the wake dot show, and at the very bottom, there's a form you can fill out. Uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. That doesn't go anywhere other than to uh, Fisher and I, and we'll put you in the running. We'll actually pick a winner on Friday for those tickets. Uh, but this festival is absolutely amazing. March 10th and 11th, downtown Tampa. Curtis Hickson Park. Thanks to Dave Cox and the team over at GMF uh, for giving us those tickets. Uh, 
uh, it'll be a blast. So this is a buddy of ours, Dave Lee, who uh, wanted to send the bottom video. Uh, he wanted us to share this with folks. He's he's become a loyal viewer, and he knows that we love dog videos. And so uh, he, he sent us this. Let's see. I'm going to pull up your... There we go. They never had a chance. Uh, uh, thank you. Thank you very much for that. See, that's that's the way you end the show. Yeah, that's the way you end the show right there. Uh, thank you so much for being a part of this today, the Wake Dot Show, a very uh, brand new for all of us. Uh, this is only week number five, and um, and it's uh, very exciting. It's very exciting around here. So make sure we appreciate all the likes, all the shares, let people know uh, that we're here. It's Facebook Live dot com slash the Wake Dot Show Monday through Friday, seven to nine. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.